I'm Paul DeGarabedian, Senior Media Analyst for Comscore, and I'm going to do a year-end wrap-up looking back at the box office year of 2022 and looking ahead to 2023. So the official number for the total year box office of 2022 is $7.538 billion, according to our Comscore data. And we just compiled that through the end of the year, backfilling all the grosses from every studio. So that's the final number, 7.538 billion. Now that was with 71 wide releases. And as we've been talking about all year and all last year, and even into this year, is that 2022 with 71 films had around 40 fewer wide release films than in the pre-pandemic year of 2019. That year generated $11.4 billion at the domestic box office. The year before that, 2018, was actually the record box office year domestically with $11.9 billion. We almost hit the $12 billion mark in that year. But if you look at the trajectory of the box office, looking at this chart here, you can see what a circuitous road it's been, a long, strange trip indeed, to get to where we are right now in terms of box office. So we just see that 11.9 billion to 11.4 in 2019. Of course, 2020 is when the bottom really fell out of the marketplace. March 20, 2020, I'll never forget it. That's when movie theaters essentially shut down. We wound up with about 2.278 billion. That's a huge drop and for obvious reasons. And up to that point in 2020, we were actually having a pretty good year. And to demonstrate that, of that 2.27 7, 8 billion, 1.8 billion of that was earned in the first three months of the year. So the lion's share of the box office coming from those first uh, three months of the year. The rest of the year was pretty bad, I have to say. If you look at 2021, 4.583 billion, almost double what was earned in 2020. And now in 2022, as compared to 21, it's 7.538 billion, a much better result. Now, the top movies, as you can see, the top 10 movies of the year, and keep in mind, this is for the calendar only. So these are only the monies earned by these films in 2022 calendar. Top Gun, obviously, at the top, $718 million domestically. Incredible showing. Obviously, that movie meant so much to theaters. And when it opened on Memorial Weekend of 22, we were off to the races. I think people were so excited by that film. The number two film for the year, remember for the calendar year, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, $436 million. That film opened in November and amassed a lot of box office in a very short amount of time. Number three, another Marvel movie, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, $411 million. And of course, Avatar, which has now jumped way ahead. It, let's just be honest, it's number two for the year, including its lifetime gross to date. But as of the end of the year, since this is a 22 recap, was $401 million. Jurassic World, $377 million. Minions, The Rise of Gru, $370 million. The Batman, $369 million, just right behind Minions. Thor Love and Thunder, $343 million. Sonic 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, $191 million. And of course, Black Adam, rounding out your top 10 films, released in 2022 at $168 million. Now, it's also a good idea to go back and look historically where we've been. And if you go back to 2012, which is where this chart, what you're looking at on screen now, goes back to that time at the box office, we can see that the $10 billion range was the norm for the full year for the domestic box office, 2012, 2013, 2014. And then something happened in 2015. We hit the $11 billion mark in domestic box office for the first time. If you look over to the right, you can see all the movies that led those various years. And again, these are calendar year only grosses because we're just taking a snapshot of each individual year. When you look at the grosses for the films on the far right, those are not their final total gross. That's the gross for the calendar year. But if you look at the comparison of 2022 at 7.538 billion compared to 2019, you can see that that 2020 drop was nearly 80% 
over the previous year. Again, for obvious reasons, theaters were shut down pretty much entirely. Drive-ins kept doing well, though, all through the summer. Thank goodness for the drive-ins. That signified that people wanted to go out to go to the movies to see them on a big screen. And then in 2021, we saw that compared to 2019, the pre-pandemic year with 11.4 billion, we were down 61.5% from that year. So the numbers are getting better. Still not great, but getting better. And then for 22, we're down 34% versus 2019. And I'll get to this a little bit later in this video, but I think 2023 is going to be a year that potentially could be in that $9 billion realm. We have to wait and see. But given the number of movies that are coming out and the great titles, and we'll get to that, I think we have a real shot. And there's many more movies set for release in 2023 than in 2022. Again, 2022 had around 71 wide releases. This year, we're going to be certainly over 90 wide releases, maybe even be into the hundreds. We'll find out as more films solidify their release pattern. Now, looking at this chart, these are the official 2022 studio market shares. For each of these companies, it includes their subsidiaries, for example, or different distribution arms of their companies. Disney, for example, includes 20th Century Studios, which is the release distributor of record for Avatar The Way of Water. So Disney leading the charge with just over $2 billion domestically for the year. That's about 27% of the total market share. Universal coming in at number two with a whopping one point six four eight billion paramount which had a stellar year as well one point almost 1.3 billion in box office revenue and warner brothers at 940.5 million of course they had elvis which was a great hit black adam every studio had something to offer i think that was really what helped the year a lot most of that though was compressed into the summer time frame summer wound up with 3.4 billion but it was a summer to remember, that's for sure. But this is your studio market share breakdown. You can see that every studio was well represented. And interestingly, Fathom Events, which had an unbelievable year, rounding out the top 10 crunchy roll as well. There's some distributors in the mix there that you ordinarily wouldn't see in the top 10, but 20 22 offered a lot of opportunity, especially in those slower corridors for certain studios, or I should say distributors, to do really well. And as you can see, Sony rounding out the top five in the studio market share race with $871 million. Of course, the holdover of Spider-Man No Way Home plus Uncharted and Bullet Train made up for a great year for the studio. Now, looking at the historical global revenue, we're still a work in progress there. But as you can see over the past many years, the $40 billion range was kind of the norm or the high $30 billion range. We're still waiting on the international numbers. We're still backfilling those right now at Comscore, but no doubt that at 7.5 billion, for the domestic box office, that if we add in what we're expecting the international total to be, that we should wind up with a global total at around $26 billion. And certainly well up from last year and way up from 2020. But of course, we hope someday to get back to the heyday of the $40 billion global box office year. And in fact, 2019 was a record breaker, $42.5 billion worldwide. So that's domestic and then added to the international, that gets you your global. And so that I think is something to uh, aspire to, that this year, let's say we get over 9 billion and the uh, international uh, component gets into a much bigger level than what we've seen in the past couple of years, that we could have a really strong, strong year. Maybe we get over 30, 35 billion uh, for 2023. But again, that remains to be seen. Now, the big news is the movies coming up in 2023 and the release calendar is chock full of definitely franchise films. And even if they're not franchises or sequels with a number at the end of them, like a John Wick 4 or Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, many of them are part of either franchises or genres that are franchises unto themselves like horror, but certainly having Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania Every time a Marvel movie is in theaters, that's a good thing. And that's going to really, I think, ignite a year that's going to be really strong and have that momentum that we didn't have in 2022 with the box office moving in fits and starts all throughout the year. So Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, set for Feb 17. Creed 3, the Creed films have been fantastic. They always do well. People are looking forward 
to Creed 3, Shazam! Fury of the Gods, John Wick 4, Dungeons and Dragons, Super Mario Brothers. See a trend here? These are all known commodities based on something that audiences are familiar with. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. My pick for maybe the biggest movie of the year, but we'll, we'll see. There's so many uh, big movies coming out that there is a lot of competition. There will be for the film that ends up being the top grossing movie of 2023. Oppenheimer, my personal most anticipated, as I've you know, said to many people, my dad was a rocket scientist and J. Robert Oppenheimer was somebody I grew up hearing stories. My dad regaled me with stories about Oppenheimer. And of course, also another interesting movie is Barbie. And Barbie to me with Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling, the teaser trailer for that film, the one that does a riff on the monolith in 2001 A Space Odyssey, that's an absolute knockout of a teaser trailer. It's so clever, really got me psyched for that one. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, there's a great YouTube video of Tom Cruise doing an amazing motorcycle base jump stunt that has to be seen to be believed. John Wick 4, I loved all the other John Wick movies, particularly the first one where we first met this character and any guy who takes revenge on people who killed his dog, that I'm all in on that, plus the cool cars, the chases, the fights, all that. Now there's a bunch of other movies in the mix. I, I can't go into all of them here, but some of the highlights certainly are The Expendables 4, uh, Gran Turismo. So I think there's just a lot of great movies in the mix for 2023. So again, to, to quickly recap, we had an incredible, although a very confounding year at the box office in 2022, but it's seven and a half billion, not a bad result. I think we're gonna see a much more even and unified calendar, meaning there's gonna be more films released more orderly so that we keep those that rising tide raising all the cinematic ships out there, not to belabor the analogy, but certainly momentum is key. We're gonna see a lot of that in 2023. So I'll see you at the movies and, and I think we're going to all be going there a lot. So I'm going to wrap up here. I'm Paul DeGarabedian, Senior Media Analyst for Comscore. And that's your 2022 Comscore box office wrap up and a look ahead to 2023. And I'll see you, as I always say, at the movies. 